Well, I'm happy to. What's up, everybody? Sean here with another live Live to Roll video. Okay. So we're going this week. We actually we've had a few technical difficulties on the start here, uh, but we have three of us here now. This for this going on here, um, and this week we're going to be talking about catheters and bladder management. Um, so Tom, I'll let you. Or uh, by, my name's Sean C five C six quad. Uh, just do a quick intro, Tom. You your quick intro, and then we'll let Kaylee give a little bit more details because she's newer. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for your patience and sorry for the late start. We were just uh, dealing with some technical technical difficulties out here. You know how it goes. Um, I'm Tom Conaway. I'm a C5, C6 quad. I've been paralyzed for 24 years. Uh, I live here in SoCal. And I will pass it along to our main guest today, Kaylee. Uh, you want to introduce yourself for us? First oh, of all, welcome like to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kaylee. I'm C5 quad. I've been injured for going on 14 years, and I, I live in SoCal also. Do you mind if I ask how you're injured? Are you okay? I was in a, a car accident when I was 14, so I shattered my C5. I was in an automobile accident as well. Um, I was four when I had my accident. Uh, wow. Yeah, so I was like pretty young. Uh, how old were you when you had yours? I was 14. Four, 14, wow. So, yeah, you were young, too. Pretty young still. That's definitely so for I'm a teenage half, girl. I'm almost uh, half, half my life in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that's uh, tough I'm time. getting... 14, going right into high school and stuff. That's a, that's a hard one. Um, you don't see, like, as many, like, younger teenagers who get injured. It's usually, like, that 18-plus that's more common. Yeah. Um, well, Kaylee, thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, like Sean said, we're here to talk about bladder care and, um, bladder management and how we all do it. The daily struggle that we all must endure because we all got to pee. Right? <laughs> the fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so Sean, how do you want to get started? Is there anything in so, particular you want to get started with? Or do we um, kind of just want to start individually talking about our experiences? Yeah, with we all can of kind of all go into it. So like basically we'll try to cover, um, I have the super pubic, you guys have the uh, Mitrofanoff, or I don't even know how to say that properly. I don't think. Mitropanoff, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and you guys have both also done intermittent cathing and stuff have bladder augmentation. So I think between the three of us, we have a lot of experience with yeah. different things. Um, and you know, like, so yeah. like, I know that we all probably have a lot of general knowledge here regarding others. Oh yeah. All of us have had quite, we, we all have a, enough experience in the chair, enough experience knowing people and uh, dealing with these issues. So I think we, we could probably cover most of this stuff. Um, so yeah, if you want. Definitely. Um, so just to cover some of the basics, if people that don't know already, um, like the most basic way people do cathing or anything after a spinal cord injury is called intermittent cathing, catheterizing, cathing, whatever. Um, and that's basically taking a, um, that's why I wanted Anthony here because he's the expert on this kind of stuff, but taking, they have these, you know, disposable catheters and they're one-time use use them, empty your bag or empty your bladder, either into a bag, straight to a toilet, into a tube. Um, and then there's other Thermal. options right. um, that you guys have, which is like, um, you know, getting a new, the, well, actually, you know what, Tom, you want to explain just a little bit of what the Mitro, Mitrofenoff is. <laughs> Mitrofenoff. Oh, okay. It's a little complex. Um, so basically what, just like summarize what Sean was saying a little bit. Um, there's main style we all start with after we get injured, which is intermittent catheterization, where you either have a Foley in, which is a catheter, they just keep inside you a little balloon inside your bladder, and it's just indwelling, and you maintain it, or you catheterize every few hours. Um, I started out intermittent cathing after my hospital stay, which I had a Foley in for a few months. They offered a super pubic, which is like a more permanent, Foley catheter, which yeah. is like through your tissue, through the wall of your bladder, right? Um, but mm -hmm. I didn't want anything indwelling. And I was very young. I was only four. So my mom was kind of making the decision for me. But she didn't want anything indwelling at the time. Because uh, they were okay helping me intermittent cath. Um, I, 
it was 10 years. I was 14 years old when I had my bladder augmentation surgery and I had the metrophenol procedure done. Now, I wasn't initially planning on doing anything. I wasn't planning on getting an uh, intermittent, like uh, the chopping off. I wasn't planning on getting a super pubic or anything. But what I needed was a bladder augmentation. A common thing that happens if you're paralyzed, this thing is called neurogenesis. It's when your cells and your tissues don't activate, you know, um, normally because you're paralyzed, right? And that can affect a whole range of things from muscles not functioning normally and um, to tissue and things not growing normally. Now, what happened for me, I was injured so young, I had a neurogenic bladder, which my bladder did not grow normally along with the rest of my body. So by the time I was a teenager, I had a very small bladder that wasn't big. I wasn't able to hold more than 150 cc's and I was drinking, you know, more to um, hydrate my body, but I was under, you know, constantly stressing my bladder out and constantly having accidents and constantly having infections. And I needed something else. I needed another solution. Um, when I went in, they said I had to get a bladder augmentation, um, they, which is basically an enlargement of your bladder. Um, they took some tissue from my small intestine. And I'm so sorry. I'm getting a phone call. Um, sorry, you guys. Technical difficulties today. Um, sorry about that. Um, and which is just basically an enlarging of your bladder. They make it bigger. Um, they took some of my small intestine tissue and they sewed it onto my bladder to increase the size. And since they were doing such an incredible invasive procedure, my doctor, this guy, Dr. Baskin from UCSF, told me about the Mitrofanov procedure. Um, now, I'm going to throw a couple words at you guys. Um, the, basically what it is, it's this thing. It's called a catheterizable stoma. Now, a stoma is an opening. It's a port in your body that allows for entrance and exit of you know, whatever it may be. The Mitrofanov procedure is a port that goes directly to your bladder. The most other common ty like type of stoma is used for colostomies, which is a port that goes straight to your intestine. Um, that's a different kind of ostomy. Um, what, the one that goes to your bladder, um, the Mitrofanov procedure, is called a urostomy. So what they did for Kaylee and I is they took some of our tissue that existed within our body. For me, it was my small intestine. Um, they can use your gallbladder, I think your appendix as well. Um, and they build a port that you can access using a catheter externally. And what it is, it's just a tiny little hole. For me, it's just to the left of my belly button, about an inch. Um, the surgeon like let me pick where I wanted to have like the port to make it best easy and most accessible for me to intermittent cath. Um, and I remember, I mean, I just took a Sharpie and did a little smiley face where I wanted him to do it. And then, you know, I woke up and there it was, you know, it was a new hole in my body with a catheter sticking out of it. And um, it was pretty incredible. Uh, my experience was, I mean, I was going from needing assistance capping every time I had to. Every three to five hours I needed either my mom or a nursing, you know, assistant or someone to, my dad, whoever it was, to help me intermittent cath and it was a pain in the ass, and it was not the easiest thing in the world. Now, um, the procedure itself, for me, it was a quite invasive surgery. Um, beyond the augmentation, you know, I had to have an indwelling catheter through the stoma that they placed, the metrophenol that they put. Um, for about six weeks after my surgery, while that healed, it was indwelling. And then afterwards, I had to learn how to catheter it. Which it was weird. It was, you know, kind of a scary thing. Like, I had a hard time, like, capping myself, you know, just the times that I had practiced intermittent, you know, through my urethra. And it was still a very, like, hard thing for me to mentally overcome. Um, but after I was kind of able to get over those hurdles, it's been incredible. I mean, it really changed my life for the better. Like, the main reason I got it, the main incentive for me behind it was independence um was to create a way that i could cast on my own you know if i'm out um, yeah without having to figure out a zipper and a button and all that 
Exactly. You know, it's just impossible with these quad paws to, you yeah. know, work them in and then to get your clothes back and adjust it correctly. So yeah. um, now that I kind of explained the procedure and stuff and uh, hopefully like people have a little bit of understanding, like Kaylee, the reason you're here is to ask you about your experience with it. Um, like, can you tell us, you know, when you got it, you know, how long after your injury, your experience with it, like if you don't don't mind like your experience with the procedure was the recovery easy was it difficult you know things you like about it things you don't like about it just you know general and also i was gonna say and also what made you decide to go with that option um over or were you given options I, I, just at that age i don't know yeah but go ahead sorry uh, <laughs> yeah so for Let me it. when i was injured i did the intermittent capping and for a girl you have to get in bed take all your clothes off just to cap through the urethra and obviously that's a lot of work to even just transfer i mean especially as a quad because some people can transfer onto a toilet and do all that but i wasn't able to do that so my mom would help me my mom and my grandma were the two who learned how to cap me in the hospital and then i did that for 10 years because i got my metrophenol four years ago so what i would do was um, at night I would wear a Foley catheter or like when I would go out because it's too hard to find somewhere to lay down when you're out wherever, you know? So it's yeah. easier for me to just put a Foley catheter and empty the bag. And the Foley catheter is basically, they just enter it through the urethra, blow up a balloon with saline, just mm -hmm. a small balloon, and then it stays inside your bladder. So you're able to just go into a bag and uh, your bladder doesn't fill up or whatever. So I did that for 10 years, but I think when I was 18, I went in, I was actually all prepared to do the Metrophenol surgery, and I was in the hospital, and I, and I was about to go into surgery, and I chickened out. The doctor kind of scared me. He told me it was, like, really intense and a hard recovery, and I just felt like I wasn't ready to do it yet. Yeah. So my mom took me home. I went to go eat because I wasn't allowed to eat the whole day before. So, <laughs> And I just didn't go back. So I waited until I felt like I was mentally ready because it is it was a really hard recovery for me. So I did it four years ago, and I don't really remember what made me like decide that I was ready to do it. I just know that when they would do the, the urodynamics test, which is they fill up your bladder, and then they, do they do like a, um, an ultrasound, right? Yeah, so generally uh, it's like pretty all-encompassing. Like they ultrasound your bladder, they ultrasound your kidneys and stuff to look for stones and things like that. And then for me, what they would do is they would fill up my bladder. They would empty me. They would ultrasound me to make sure I'm empty. And then they would fill my bladder up. When I felt like my bladder was full, they would stop because they wanted to see how much I could retain before yeah. I could, like, you know, sense it or, you know, if I had any sense of it. And then they would catheterize me and take an ultrasound after to measure and see how much my bladder was emptying. Because very common for paras and quads who catheterizes, they don't empty completely. Mm -hmm. And the right. dynamics is usually designed to help assess, like, general bladder health, look for any, you know, stones, kidney stones, anything like that. But also to, you know, check how you're emptying in your cathing routine and things like that. Because chronic infections, the most common cause of chronic infections is just not evacuating completely. And that, you know, urine that's retained, you know, sits in there for more than three or four hours. is just like a breeding ground of bacteria, bad bacteria. And, you know, end up with a UTI and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so oh. when I would do that, my bladder didn't hold very much because I'd been injured so long, my bladder shrunk. And so I just decided if I was going to go through with a bladder enlargement, I might as well just do the metrophenol while I'm under because I didn't want to do two surgeries. Yep, same right. with me. It's such yeah. an like, easy thing to do. Like, they're all kind of in the same place anyways, right? Exactly. So they actually took my appendix to create the, um, the pathway. So it, mine is in my belly button, and it just looks like a normal belly button. But obviously, it's open. You just can't. Re I mean, you can't even tell at all. I wish I had a way to show you, cool. but you can't. It just looks normal, and then you just stick the catheter in, and then pee into you know like a bag or whatever. 
And basically, I decided that I wanted to do that because I was just tired of having to rely on the same two people to help me all the time. Right. And yeah. I wanted, like, anybody to be able to help me. Because I, I still haven't quite figured out the right catheters to be able to open and do it on my own. And they keep messing with me and denying me the catheters that work for me. So that's, that's, I have that's that a problem. Bum. This yeah, is why that's... we need Anthony on this show. We're supposed to have another guest, this guy, Anthony Orfis. He's awesome, incredible member of the spinal cord injury community down here. But he's also a catheter salesman and rep. A rep. He um, works for a company. And they sell catheters. So he's kind of the expert on yeah, different types of Yeah, he knows like all the good brands, like all the ones that work for quads, all the ones yeah, that work for. Touch on like we can touch on a little bit with just our general knowledge. But the other thing, which is a big part of our life, which we all know is. Um, getting this stuff approved by the insurance and getting it, you know. I use a Coloplast self-catheter kit, um, and it's a self-contained cath kit. Um, you know, it's, like, pre-lubricated. I personally, there's two types of lubrication for catheters, hydrophilic and just, like, regular, like, KY, sure. like, lubrication. Yeah, I don't like yeah. those. Uh, yeah, yeah, I use the gel because, for me personally, um, I like the tackiness a little bit. The uh, hydrophilic ones are too slippery for me. Like with my quad hands, like I can't manipulate. It's See, like, for me, when I try to put the jelly, it becomes too much trying to put it into my belly button, so it gets clogged. Yeah, so uh, I mean, that's kind of the um, like other side of it for me is like I always have to have like a wipe or like a paper towel or something because like the yeah. lube in your hands and stuff, right? And that is like the uh, other like pain i've used a hydrophilic the other time though and i spilled water all over myself <laughs> yeah see i was using the speedy cats which is like all enclosed the bags attached but it's the hydrophilic ones and that was the easiest and they stopped approving them so now i just have the i don't know it's just the catheter no bag or anything and um, oh. anybody that isn't familiar hydrophilic catheters are um, catheter tubes that are made out of a special material. Um, they're, I'm sure you heard of like hydrophobic, meaning like it repels water, which is used for like electronics and phones. Well, hydrophilic adheres to water and it's just it's a plastic that becomes super, super slippery when it comes in contact with water. And so the way that they work is you pop a bag of water on the catheter, the water adheres and it becomes super slippery. So whenever you put it in the, you know, opening where you're trying to catheterize, it's very easy on your tissue and, you know, very, like, easy for ones that, like, have easy, you know, irritations and stuff, which is, like, very common for intermittent cathing. Um, but, again, this is, like, the choices you have to make. Um, but there, what and I it's all a lot of times with, personal preference because some might be better, like yeah. you said – like Kaylee likes the gel because it's a little, or I mean, likes the hydrophilic, but you, you don't, you know, it's too slippery for you. Like that's the way it is with all of us. Like it really is finding what works for you. So it takes some trial and error. Like it helps to hear from people and they'll like, you know, hear what works, but it really takes trying it yourself and, and figuring it out, like to see if it does work. And, like, yeah. Trying it more than once too. Cause like very right. often, like you can't really figure out the first go. And, you know, um, I mean, my catheter kits, I get every month, I get like 250 of them from my insurance. And they're 13 bucks a pop. So every time, I, you know, cath, it's $13 for one of those kits. Damn. And, I mean, that's pretty crazy to me. To Just to go about. pee. $13 Just, to go pee. Yeah. yeah and, you know, but, it's, it's, but it's every so month, it's like almost $3,000, you know, just to have the right to use the bathroom. Now, if your catheter isn't right if your kits aren't right and stuff and you have to request and change and try new things i mean it becomes incredibly difficult because this stuff is not cheap the insurance is unwilling and uncapable you know like approving and authorizing more than one type of catheter for you and it becomes like a really scary like hard thing because you don't always have that security and if you don't have the right tools to help you pee or help you take care of your body then the odds of you taking care of your body effectively are not good, you know, um, which is not great. You know, one of the things we always talk about on here is preventative care. Um, and, you know, it, unfortunately, we aren't often set up to... Insurance doesn't like that. Exactly. No, yeah, no, they don't. Gets, and then call them after, right? 
Um, one thing, Kaylee, though, which um, we talked we've talked about in support groups and stuff in the past, um, and you know, I'm sure we can put you in touch with Anthony, um, and he's like a part of the Triumph community, and you know, friends of a lot of us down here. He will give samples of catheters. He's given me like you know a dozen different types of you know uh, self cath bags, to just try out and stuff. And I do know for a fact that you can call catheter companies like Coloplast and other similar companies. And if you just ask for samples, they will send you out, you know, like. Yeah, I've had a lot of different samples of different ones. But what I also struggle with, too, is um, my scoliosis. So it makes my where I cap is kind of curved. So I can't have any that are like uh, super flexible. They have to be a little bit more stiff. And I find I find that most of them are really bendy. And it yep. won't go in. Interesting. Crazy. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I guess. Hope maybe we can talk to Anthony and see if he knows of any offhand that are a little more rigid or something. Or there might, you know, there's got to be some that are made a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I uh, so, have a friend who, uh, like, for their senior project in college, like, was a part of a team designing catheters. And there's catheters you know, that go inside veins, you know, that are tiny, that are, you know, like special materials that are harder, that, you know, are designed to do different things in different sizes. You know, the urethra catheters are always kind of unique and different in that, you know, it's just like uh, um, different size and stuff, right? But there are tons of different material out there and different types of things. One story I always like to tell is um, I had a lot of trouble cathing. And I was like 12 or 13 years old. I, I wasn't able to catheterize in my urethra for some reason. I couldn't figure it out. Um, it just like the catheter wouldn't go in. It was like I thought I had a stricture in my urethra or there was just like some kind of obstruction causing this. But sometimes it would work. Sometimes it wouldn't. There wasn't like often blood or anything, signs of any issues. But what had happened is I had hit puberty. I was injured when I was a, like a kid. So my body was changing, I was growing, and what happens to, I guess, young adult men is their prostate will start to grow when they hit puberty. And they need this thing, it's called a coup de tip catheter. And it's a yeah. catheter with a special curved tip that just goes around the prostate. And mm-hmm. I had no idea about that, but it's a, they make a special hardened tip of the catheter. So the rest is bendy, but the hardened tip is just a little tiny hard curve that like allows you to circumvent that thing. And it's, I guess, a very common thing that happened. But I was a kid, I was seeing a child uh, pediatric, you know, a spinal cord doctor, and they hadn't, you know, they didn't have the knowledge to tell me about this too. But very often, um, it's up to, you know, the individual, you know, it's up to you, Kaylee, or, you know, you, Sean, whoever it is, right, to talk to your doctors. And if that doctor doesn't have the solution and the answer, then can you refer me to a doctor that does? Um, Because, I mean, I saw two or three doctors that just weren't able to tell me about a very common type of catheter that existed and that was commonly used. But, you know, it wasn't until I spoke to the right person with the right knowledge. I was like, yeah, here, this is all you need. And, you know, this could, like, solve your problem. I'm like, you know, it's crazy. So I think that's a big part of it sometimes, too, is continuing to pursue and continuing to stay after and not settling, you know, things aren't working right. Um, yeah, you know, and it's hard to find the right doctor that has dealt with spinal cord injuries and knows what we need. Yeah, hard or sometimes impossible. Yeah. yeah so I got a few questions for you guys coming in on a thing and stuff. Um, a yeah. couple are, um, one of them is, do you have any feeling um, or sensation for catheterizing? And then do you need to use any... Uh, Instagel, which is like a numbing sterile gel while catheterizing, if you do have any sensation um, or not. Uh, yeah, Ed was asking, I guess he has How about with those pain. Daily? For me, I don't have any uh, sensation mm, of like, no pain, I don't feel the catheter going into my belly button or anything like that. I do have yeah. sensation of when I have to, when I have to go pee. Right. But that's it. Not, I don't. So I don't need any numbing or anything like that. Yeah, yeah um, so, same, but... much same situation with me. Um, my bladder, I have sensitivity. I can tell when it's full. Um, I get a lot of bladder spasms throughout the day for some reason. Like, 
Um, so sometimes my bladder just like I can feel it bothering me or bugging me, even if I don't have to pee. Um, and I think it's just a unique part of my spinal cord injury um, is the bladder sensitivity. I don't have any sensation when I catheterize and I push the catheter in. But if the catheter does go in too far and push against the bladder wall, it causes cause my bladder to spasm. And I will oh, yeah. that. Um, and same thing. I have sensation when my bladder is full. When it starts to stretch, um, I'll get this, like, kind of weird tingly feeling um, all over my body. It's almost like pins and needles. Uh, it's like a nerve. Yeah. There that's the AD fun. a little bit, man. That's not, that's. Yeah, yeah, it's like the beginning. That's what of it AD. is. It's just a little bit of AD. Like, yeah, bugging me, and that's my indicator. But it's like funny because I know, like, I can ride that out for a while. You know, yeah, like, if I don't have path, like, I mean, if, or if I'm not in position to, you know, it's funny. Like sometimes you're not always able to like sneak away to the bathroom right away, just like anybody, right? You want to be able to hold it a little while. <laughs> it's funny, like we're sitting there feeling our bodies get disreflexic. <laughs> Um, and we learn our limits. I mean, I don't recommend for people to do that, but yeah, I know when I when I need to go or when it's it's okay. I can wait a little bit. Yeah, and you know, just like you said, not recommending. Always best to stick to that three to four hours if you can. Yeah. But it's important to know your limits, and it's really important to understand your body because those situations do come up where you don't always you can't always cast right that minute, and it's yeah. good to know that. You have a little bit of time, you know. That, and I think the enlargement also gives us that peace of mind because we can hold so much more. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I went yeah. from being able to hold, like, less than 150 cc's to, like, be able to hold, like, six, 700 now, you know, like, easy. Yeah. Which is, you Same. know, uh, like a game changer. So, yeah, and cool. then the other thing I wanted to talk about, so when they enlarged uh, my bladder, they used part of my intestines. And so every morning I have to flush my bladder out because it gets uh, mucus from your intestines have natural mucus. So when they use it to enlarge your bladder, it gets mucus in it. Yeah, it's a type of tissue um, that, you know, that intestinal tissue has these things that are called goblet cells. And the goblet cells, yeah, have that mucus production. Uh, you know, similar cells line our sinuses and things like that, right? Uh, you know, our snot. Uh, but same thing, Kaylee. The daily bladder irrigation. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, side effects of the... Yeah, I think that's the probably the only thing that I don't like about it. And sometimes my catheter will get clogged, so I have to move it in and out a lot because it will be clogged by the mucus. Yep. I think that's that's probably literally the only thing that I don't like about it. But I would do the surgery a million times over. Same here. I would do the surgery again and again and again just because of what it's offered me in terms of freedom and independence um, and just like ease of com- you know, comfort caffeine. It's like a lot easier not yeah. have to press every time or transfer every time. Like it was a trip the first time I cathed in my chair. I'm like, oh my God, this is so easy. Yeah. And bladder irrigation, you know, it's just like any routine. I mean, it's like part of my, you know, morning care that I do. You know, I get up, I do my cathing, I do you know a syringe or two of irrigation you know if i need to and then you know i move on to my bowel care in my shower and you know yeah. just routine uh, and at, at night i also instead of waking up to cath i just leave a catheter in and i tape it down to my stomach and i attach it to a bag interesting so i don't have to wake up really? i uh you're the only person i've ever heard of that will do that um oh, i don't like waking up <laughs> I, don't like right no. I mean, I hate it. Like, I almost religiously have to get up at like 3 a.m. every night. Yeah. And I feel like that, you know, I got a pee feeling, you know, you got to sit up, cast, do the thing, deal with the bag of pee, you know, by nope. the other time, you know, you're fully awake. Like, oh man, yeah. That's too much. I don't like doing all that. So I just leave the bag in. I mean, some nights I won't if I'm not home or whatever, yeah. but it's just easier. Yeah. And that doesn't and bother you or cause any, doesn't cause any irritation or I, anything like that, having it in all night? I use a different catheter uh, at night okay. than I do during the day, so it's a little bit softer. Okay, it's cool. it's not a Foley catheter. You're never supposed to put a Foley catheter in, in there and blow it up because oh, it can mess with the, the passage or whatever. Okay. So it's just a regular catheter, and I just tape it in, and that's it. It stays. Interesting. That's That's cool. Good. Another yeah. really common question for the Machopinov procedure is like, how does it not leak? Um, 
like if it like is there is it only one yeah, way? Yeah, people think it comes out. It's supposed, of the it's supposed to be one way. Um, initially, you know, with my experience, um, I did have a lot of leaking. Um, first off, like the first out, out of the, the out of the yeah out of the stoma out of the metrophodoph, like there was like a lot of urine that would come out, and um, I couldn't like I was I thought it was it was hard. It was like a mess. It was like embarrassing. It was like really tough to deal with. But the solution that they gave me, which was the simple outpatient procedures, they gave me one-time Botox injection. Now, it wasn't Botox. Um, I don't know the exact name of the stuff. It's The way they described it is like it's similar to Botox. And I know, Sean, you go in there for your yearly Botox injections for your well, super not, pubic. Not anymore, the tissue. I'll talk about that okay. in a little bit. But yeah. Okay. But um, they did... It was, uh, they went in and did some injections, which is supposed to tighten the tissue around the port. Now, the way that it's designed, the way that the stoma is designed is, um, there's supposed to be a fold in the tissue. So when you push the catheter in, the catheter is supposed to push past the fold and into the bladder. Now, when the uh, urine is in there and it pushes out against the, from the inside out, it's supposed to push that fold closed and not allow any flow out. Um, for me, the um, port, you know, on the inside of my bladder, was the opening was big. It was too big. Um, and it was allowing for a lot of, like, urine to, you know, go the other way and escape out. But the solution to that was, again, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact name of it. It was like a Botox injection, but it's supposed to be permanent. It was one time. They did it, like, 10 years ago, and I haven't needed to go back since. And I don't have any issues leaking. Unless I'm like over, over full. And like, yeah, I don't over. leak out of mine. I just, if I leak, it's the normal way. So. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'll still leak through my urethra too, but very, very, very rarely. Uh, yeah. Unless I have like a UTI or something, then. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, enough about the Mitrofanov. <laughs> Um, how about we uh, shift our focus over and ask some questions to our main uh, um, host and show producer, Sean, here, quad pro yeah. extraordinaire. Uh, um, how do you manage your bladder, um, bro? Um, so for me personally, I do the super pubic, um, which for me, I didn't even know about your guys' procedure. I, I, I wasn't even given that, like, I don't know, my urologist, whatever, at the hospital, that wasn't even, like, on the table at the time, or it wasn't... It's relatively newish. Like, it's getting more common. I mean, like, it's been around for a while, but it's very common nowadays, so. um, which they didn't often, like, try to sell it to quads, um, like, in in years past for whatever reason. Yeah. From so, like, what, that's what... what when when, I, when I was get like, that, that was my main thing. Like, that, I was offered... Super pubic or tried like our condom cathing, which if people don't know, we'll do a quick, I'll do a quick thing. Condom cathing is what it sounds like for a guy. It's basically a condom with uh, the end that hooks up to a tube and you basically just pee if your bladder can naturally kick off, which mine actually does have, I have a really spastic bladder and it sort of worked. My issue was keeping those things on all day. I every day ended up with peeing on myself. Um, so after about six months, I went from that to the super pubic. That was when they offered me, um, like that was the option that they offered me, you know, as a good quad option. They said I could be independent with it. They said I could have more freedom. I wouldn't rely on somebody to be cathing me all the time. Um, which yeah, for those first few months I was, and I, for me, I, I was 21 when I got hurt, just turned 21. So like I was a little older and I was really wanting to party and hang out with friends and go <laughs> like honestly i had just started going to bars like i was like yeah like i don't want to have to come home to and have my your best life yeah like i was like i don't want to have to have somebody come with me to cast me every time you know like and do all this stuff so um so i was like all right let's do it you know we'll go to the super pubic so the super pubic for people that don't know much about it it's essentially what um kaylee was talking about like a foley that's an indwelling catheter, but instead of it being through your urethra, they actually surgically place it. So for me, the, the super pubic, it's uh, down below your belly button, um, in between like your like pubic area and the belly button. It actually is a direct path into your bladder. So it's a straight shot, straight through the skin. 
Um, they put a little stoma in. When, what was that, Kate? When I was healing from my Mitrofenov, they actually put a super pubic in. Really? So that's crazy. So yeah, that's the thing with the super pubic is it actually is completely reversible. Like if I ever wanted to get rid of it, I could pull it out and within days it would be closed again because it's essentially yeah, just exactly. an open wound. It's like a piercing. Um, that's, that's kind there. of a big cost benefit analysis when you're like early on in your injury. If you're considering whether you want to do this or not, you can try out a super pubic and then go back from it. Whereas yeah, and, and it's a minor, it's, it's, not it's the surgery is procedure. not as invasive as like what you guys had to go through. It was like a, you know, I showed up in the morning, got the surgery left in the afternoon. Like I didn't even, I didn't even spend a night in the hospital for my super pubic. It was just, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a easier option, I, I guess, um, which is maybe why they suggested it for me. And if it wasn't going to work, they could have steered me in another direction like you guys and stuff. Um, and done it like Did a blood Did you run. get a lot of, did you get a lot of AD when recovering from it? Because when I had the super pubic in, when I was recovering from my Mitrofenov, I had AD really, really bad. And after a couple of weeks, I, I think it was three weeks I had to leave it in just while my bladder healed and they took it out and I had no more AD. So it was coming from that. Well, so it's um, funny you say that because that's usually why they offer what Sean said, like other options is some people with sensitive bladders, like for me, I can't have anything in dwelling because I'm just constantly dysreflexic from it. Like it's yeah. constantly causing that discomfort and my body can't hang. So, I honestly do have some mild effects of AD all the time. And like, um, so every time I get my, I get mine changed every three weeks. Uh, people can change. I, I've met people that change every like week, 10 days to like four months or more sometimes. Um, but for me, I can't keep them in for too long or it just starts to wear um, just for one one reason also. So I can't use silicone um, like anything, silicone coated, silicone catheter at all because they're too rigid for me. I actually need a very soft, flexible tube. So the latex catheters are a lot better for me and that's what works for me, but they deteriorate faster. So after three, four weeks, like they actually, you can like, you can see the deterioration. You can see the discoloration. It's almost starting to like break apart in there. Um, so for me, I change every three weeks, but when I change for my first 24 hours of the change, it's pretty rough. I'm peeing on myself like a lot. Like I'm peeing some through the bag, but also just peeing out like through my urethra, just peeing. Um, so what I'll do is because I hate sitting in pee and I don't wear diapers, I don't wear any of that stuff. I will keep my shorts unzipped and keep a towel there and direct, like basically directly pee into a towel and then toss that towel every hour or so, like as soon as it gets wet. And basically that keeps the pee on top of my lap, not under my butt to where, you know, I'm sitting in wetness and like have moisture under my butt and could chance sores yeah. or anything. That's one perk of being a guy, huh? That is one perk of being a guy because I don't think you could get away with that as a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you can't aim anything up to pee. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, so that's one thing. Um, and um, so that, that that's one issue that I have. And it's a pain in the ass. And I do, I'm all AD that first 24 hours. Like, um, you will see my like forehead beating with sweat a little bit. Like I'm red a little bit. Like I get goosebumps and everything on my arms. Um, and it's just, it's a do rough. Do you get the really bad headache? I don't get, I get mild headaches because it's not like getting to the point of like, if I have a bad, if I have a UTI or something and get the change, then yes, I have had days where I'll get like that throbbing headache where it just, it's so bad and like you just can't do anything. Like I can barely open my eyes cause it's like so intense. Like it's exhausting too. Like, yeah. Those are hard. That's really hard. And honestly, if I have a UCI, when I get the change, I, I usually don't even that, that 24 hour window ends up being sometimes like two or three days, like to where I'm still leaking and peeing on myself because my bladder is just the shock of it and the infection. Um, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot for my bladder and it, it becomes intense. Yeah. For it, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of my, you change it at home. Yes. So I have a home health nurse that comes out and changes it. Um, it's just like from a nursing agency, they send a nurse out. 
they bring the, the catheter and the few supplies for me and they change it and do like a sterile change um, every three weeks. So, uh, and, and then, then also, yeah, going back to the hospital for the chain, it is indwelling, but um, they're replaceable. Like, even like not by a nurse like i mean it sounds like sketchy but like there are people that have like learned or family members that have learned to you know replace the super cubics and stuff too um so that's definitely like a easier option sometimes to try out and to figure out how to manage yeah. stuff before and then like dude the quad always like sean you like andrew like some other guys like they live and die by the super cubics like they kind of like I, like, I don't know, like, how you guys do it, because, um, yeah, I mean, but then again, like, I'm almost, like, envious sometimes, too, because you just, like, roll up to the, you know, you're in the bathroom for 30 seconds, you empty your bag, and you're out, you know? Like, <laughs> so that's what they, all, all my quad friends that cath, um, you're a little quicker because you guys, with that, it's obviously faster when you guys can go through your belly button to your stomach, um, but all my, I have a few quad friends that cath just regular intermittent. And they're in the bathroom for 20, 25 minutes. And I'm just like, dude, like, <laughs> hurry up. Like, let's go already. Like, but because for me, yeah, I'm used to running in there. Bam, bam, I'm done in a matter of a minute or two. I empty the bag. Or I don't even need to find a bathroom. I'll just empty it into a bush outside because it's convenient and easy enough for me to just let the bag rip. Bam. I don't have to take anything out. Nothing, you know, like. You don't have to undress. You know, yeah, I'll just, yeah, no. I, I'll just pee anywhere now. I don't yeah. care. Right. I'll um, be inside the bar and I'll, I'll pee. Nobody even knows. <laughs> that's a totally i've had to do that before like i've been at concerts before and not wanting to move it's like so oh my like to get back to the bathroom and then to get back to my place would be impossible so like i'll have whoever i'm with just use like a cup or whatever like like i'll just like yeah. oh fin finish my beer real quick and then fill it back up <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, and hope nobody picks it up and drinks yeah if somebody <laughs> tries to steal that beer then that's on them <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's so bad. <laughs> uh, I got a quick. I got a question. Somebody asked me what my frequency of UTIs with superpubic is. Um, I like probably once or twice a year get a UTI bad enough that I take uh, antibiotics for. But I constantly have like a low level UTI and bacteria in my bladder. Um, that well, I let's talk with. about that for a minute. And what about cool, you like, guys? Yeah, so how about you guys? Yeah, let's talk about infections. Um, Kaylee, what's your experience with UTIs? Yeah, so I get, well, I was getting them pretty often when I switched catheters from the ones that I liked. But now I've kind of figured out a routine. I just drink pure cranberry juice, at least one glass every day. And I think that's honestly helped me the best. Nice, and yeah. so I only get maybe one or two a year or something like that That's so um, the, i know that metrophenov doesn't really it doesn't really decrease your uh chance of getting utis no and you know that really is always down to your you know bladder management routine every individual it doesn't matter how you do it i mean it you know what, what process you use it just matters like how well you do it and how well you take care of yourself uh you know like i always tell this story that my surgeon told me is that like he had a guy who used to keep a catheter in his shoe it was like wrapped up like, in a circle like said like fold in a napkin and stuff it inside his sock and he reused that catheter five or six times a day and wow. he intermittent cath and the guy never had a uti he didn't know his routine outside of that or what he did but it just was like crazy and it worked for him I personally have struggled with UTIs um, my whole life, you know, because of the intermittent cathing. You know, for me, I think early on, um, I wasn't draining completely um, through the uh, augmentation and the, you know, surgeries and stuff. Like, I'm really, like, able to empty my bladder really well now. But, man, oh, man, I've had, like, a dozen or more infections throughout my life, um, you know, for a while. is at least one or two a year. And kind of like Sean, because I intermittent cath, and I'm always outside stuff, you know, going into my bladder, you know, it's like, as much as you wash your hands, as much as you try, you're not going to always 
omit all the bacteria and you're going to introduce yeah we always have bacteria in our blood you know like i feel like i always have kind of like a little low-grade infection i can't like go take my pee in and get it tested without them saying yeah you have a little uti it's like yeah Yeah. i know it's just not a bad uti yeah Uh, exactly my bladder starts to spasm when I start to get dysreflexia, when there's like a really bad odor or when there's a lot of sediment. It's like, okay, I know. And my treatment for that um, is water, 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 water. I will drink like a fish for like three days. I mean, I will like up my like 40 ounces a day to like 120, 160, like as much as I can. And I will pee every 45 minutes. Like five, <laughs> six hundred, like for two Katie's days. Katie's like, nope, not. Nah. Well, no, too much work. <laughs> and but it was two days, so I'll be good, and like it'll be gone, and I'll have flushed it, and it'll be like out of my system. If I try that and I half-ass it, and I don't like flush it get good enough, and like keep that up, um, then I'll have to get on some antibiotics and. If I get on antibiotics and that messes up my bowel care, it messes up everything. Like it's like oh, yeah. all bad. So I really try to do like, I mean, it's really simple. Um, that's what my um, urologist who did my bladder surgery and stuff said. He was like, the best way to manage UTIs and stuff and the mucus production, and everything is water, 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 water. Stay hydrated. And it's hard when you're yeah. intermittent capping because. Honestly, I don't drink sometimes because I know I'm going to have to so pee. So that is but one benefit I, for the super pubic. Like when I know I have a UTI, or like I will pound so much water. And then like on the days, so the days I get it changed and I have the leakage, I also won't put a leg bag on. I keep my bed bag, which has like so much flow and so much space. So I will just drink tons of, I would drink like a gallon of water. And I think that helps yeah. with the change and just flushing any crap that was in there. Just pushing it out for me, but yeah, water, yeah, I mean, water, what, water. So you're just moving that bacteria and, out of there. You're moving that infect, like that infection stuff out. It's, there's a way to get it out, a way to flush it. And the other thing for us is irrigating. Um, take, mm-hmm. you know, do up irrigation instead of doing it once a day. I will irrigate three times a day. I'll do it once in the afternoon and once in the evening. And it's just a matter of getting, you know, the, you know infection out of there getting that bacteria in the urine out of there um anything that's in there and retained um but i haven't struggled with uti significantly in years and what you take kaylee with the cranberry juice what you're doing i wish anthony was on here because he'd talk about it um the stuff in cranberry juice that um it's called demonos um and i was gonna you can take pills uh, of the stuff that's like yeah, I, I take the pills too. The pills versions of that stuff. Yeah, and, so I take cranberry pills, demanos, and the cranberry juice. I feel like the cranberry juice works better though. Yeah, I think and, the combo you know, of everything it, probably is good. So, <laughs> it, um, what that all. does is it changes the um, environment in your bladder. I think it alters the pH um, of whatever it is, and it doesn't allow for the bacteria that causes the UTI to exist in that environment. Um, if you take a lot of the demonos, you can take a bunch of it. Your body just pees out the excess, but it just creates an environment that the bacteria can't exist in. And it works wonders for people. Anthony swears by it. I know several people that swear by it. Now, Kaylee, you're another testament to the demonos. And it's available on Amazon, like the pills and the powder. Yeah. But yeah. Um, easiest way to get it, like you said, drink some organic, legit, like... Yeah, or, not that uh, sugary uh, stuff. Cranberry yeah. juice. Nope. You got to drink the yeah. real stuff. Real cranberry yeah, juice doesn't fun. taste very good. Like, it's not good. <laughs> the actual cranberry. No, but if cranberry. you take a shot of it and you can, like, fight through it, then it's good for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not... It's, it's all right. <laughs> Tom, uh, Jim from the chat was asking, what do you use to irrigate with? Or what do you both of you guys use to irrigate with? When so this sounds look. crazy, um, Jim, but I use tap water. Um, Whoa, I know man. people that use saline solution and get yeah, their saline um, delivered. I have a cup that I keep my syringe in. I change my syringe out every three or four days. After every irrigation, I have my nurse like wash it with hot water really well. 
But that cup, I literally just fill up with tap water. Um, I make sure the temperature is not too warm. Um, but even if it's a little cooler, as long as it's not ice cold, it doesn't bother me. I'm not temperature sensitive to it. And the reason I use tap water and not like some, you know, pure saline, you know, in a sealed container is because I don't need to. Um, that's what my right surgeon, my doctor told me. He was like, honestly, you can use saline. He was like, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I haven't had any issues. I don't have an increased rate of infection using the tap water. The thing that you got to be most uh, like careful about is the temperature comes out of your faucet. Um, you know, and that was just my experience with it. Again, I'm not telling anybody what to do, um, but that is what I do daily. And I don't have any I like actually, other side so effects from it. I actually flush my catheter every other day too, because even with the super pubic, I get sediment and blockages and things. Um, and I use a mix of saline and then I use acidic solution uh, that I get from, and it's actually made. Uh, I used originally just straight the acidic solution, but it was too harsh on my bladder. Like I could feel it shock when it went in, when, when they would flush it in. Um, so my urologist suggested doing the mix with the either saline or sterile water, either one. But yeah, I use that as a mix every other day. Uh, and the acidic solution helps break up any crap that's in my catheter wall. So yeah, that's what I do for a super pubic. Yeah, I, and just again, use, I just use a saline. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And you know, part of the main reason I can use um, regular tap water is because, like, by virtue of living in a first world country who has, like, you know, like decent water treatment and things like that, like, again, I don't advise just using any old water source to, yeah. you know, irrigate your bladder. But yeah. worst case scenario, you have, like, a bottle of Arrowhead or something and you know that it's sealed and you, like, need to irrigate or something, like, there are other solutions outside of like, like saline, you know, like pure, you know, like really like treated water. Yeah. Your um, bladder is full of bacteria. It's full of shit anyways. So, you know, the logic there is, is like, you know, using tap water, you're not going to introduce any bacteria, anything that's not already present, you know, because it's like the body's waste already, you know, um, it's already got bacteria and stuff in there. I said, I guess that's a pretty fair point. Yeah, it's already in your if the bacteria is in there. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. again, uh, this is all our, like all our own individual experiences. Like, I'm not a doctor. I'm just you know been doing this for <clears throat> a long time. But again, like I've been doing the same so. style of irrigation since I've had this stoma, which is like going on like, twelve to thirteen years, and haven't had any major issues but one thing i do want to do real quick um sean if that's cool is can we just like summarize the different types of catheters we talked about today um for paras most common thing they try to give you first off if you in, instead of just intermittent cathing if you're able to empty your bladder somewhat normally um through spastic or whatever is the condom cath right sean yeah now, so that's and, the... um, from what I've heard, from my, I've never had a personal experience with it, because um, my bladder won't empty regularly like that through my urethra. Um, is that the adhesive, like that when you roll the condom on, the adhesive that's supposed to keep the urine from like leaking out, I've heard it's really tough on the skin. Um, that's what I was gonna say. From like the guys that I've talked to that have tried it. Um, but again, I do know like one para that that's what he uses and they weren't great for him. And, you know, that's how he does it. So again, like something to try out. It's probably the easiest thing to try out because it's nothing indwelling, you know, it's just, yeah, that's the lesson, you know, least invasive, I, easiest thing for sure for the guys to try at least. And um, again, I don't know if there's a version of a condom cat that exists for females because generally it entails, you know, rolling a hug your penis or something, which, yeah, no. you know, ladies don't have the hardware for that. <laughs> but um, moving on from the condom cat, there's what our um, resident quad here, Sean uses, is a super pubic. Mm -hmm. And then the other type of invasive um, method is the Mitrofenov procedure, which is what Kaylee and I have. And, you know, we talked about the costs and the benefits. It really comes down to the individual and the person. You, know, you have to look at your life. You have to look at 
you know, how you live and the benefits of each style and then give it a go and give it a try. You know, usually the biggest deciding factor is how your body reacts and responds to it. You know, um, not everyone is able to have a super pubic because of the nerve sensitivity and because of, you know, whatever it is. Not everybody's even able to intermate cat easily, you know, regularly. A lot of times it's easier to put in the foley and leave it for some people because the process of going in and out, you know, all like multiple times a day is really hard. It can um, create scar tissue too. Exactly. It can cause lots of issues. Um, but educating yourself, informing yourself, getting an appointment with a urologist that has spinal cord injury experience. Um, do not do That's yourself important. a disservice of going to a urologist that thinks they know what's best for you, but have not worked on quality repairs before because I'll tell you right now, like they just simply do not um, by nature of our unique condition. It's so, you know, unique and special. You really need a specialist who has experience to, you know, help you understand and figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just been my experience with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any advice for individuals out there who are like trying to decide or make decisions or thinking about it but that's kind of how I try to tackle the problem and how I did so I just looked at the costs and the benefits and I educated myself and I think the most important thing is educating yourself really honestly is that and then uh trial and error I mean some of these things are harder to try than others so doing the research and really you know learning everything you need to know first is important but um you really don't know until you try really i mean that's you know yep exactly and you know the body is like a crazy resilient thing um you know the what they say is like i mean you body will like adapt and adjust to almost anything given enough enough time you know, my um, metrophenol procedure, at the very beginning, there was tons of mucus, and it was, like, a lot, and it was a little overwhelming, but, you know, after the first couple of years, like, I don't have to irrigate every day now because the mucus production of the cells decreased so much that, you know, it's just not necessary. You know, like, I, you get so good and so routine at capping, like, you just don't think about it too much anymore when you go to do it. It's just, like, a routine, but, you know, this stuff is so essential for our daily life, like we all gotta pee. We all this gotta is literally poop, you know? like the most we important all take like... care of that stuff. And you're doing yourself a disservice a disservice and you're hindering yourself so much if you do not find, you know, what's best for you. You know, and it's gonna take work and it's gonna take time and effort and trial and error and frustration. But once you find the best thing that works for you, it really does change your life for the better. Um Yeah. Like, even for Kaylee, I mean, you had to go so many years with having to transfer to a bed, having only two people that could help you, you know, every time you had to pee. Like, that's, you know, that's that's a lot for people. So, like, just opening up that independence for you, because, I mean, obviously with it in the belly button, it makes it a little easier for other people to help you, too, even if you can't get it yourself. Uh, it's not so... Yeah. Literally invasive. anybody can help me. So it's... yeah, so that's like that's you're really able cool. to do it independently too, right? Or not yet? Um, she I, said I can, but I have the what I have the hard time doing is putting the catheter in the bottle and mm -hmm. keeping it in there. I can get it in the belly button. I just can't get it in the bottle or whatever I'm peeing into. Okay, interesting. All right, Kaylee, let me get you in touch with Anthony because there's some like self-contained catheter kits that like the bag is attached, like. Yeah, Once I've tried a lot of them, but they just, they're too, yeah. most of them are too flimsy. Yeah, okay. Other than the speedy cats, but. Interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, in nonetheless, it still made the process a lot, lot, lot easier for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, my biggest thing was, like, going out and about, like, even with my family. Like, if we were going somewhere for more than five or six hours and, like, we had to figure out a way for me to cast and, you know, like lay out in my chair in the van, you know, whatever event or venue we're at, you know, trying to like cast, you know, like out in the space because there's, you know, not like a bathroom big enough or something. But that was the thing that was like such a life changer, such a game changer for me. It's like just the freedom to cast, you know, like easily anywhere, you know, like being able to 
just not have to worry about having to get out of my chair somewhere because it's just yeah. such a limiter like what you want to do or the amount of time you can spend somewhere it's like mm, i gotta be home because i got to get out of my chair to cat yep yeah, that's oh, okay. just so frustrating uh real quick before we wrap up we mentioned botox earlier and our buddy sir rob just at, asked the question uh um he leaks in between cath like cathing himself and the doc the doc just recommended botox shots um and he's asking what our experience is. I'll share mine briefly. I'll tell you just real quick. Botox does work com for stopping your bladder spasms. It will prevent you from peeing on yourself in between the cathing. But for me, um, I had complications with it. It spread through my system when I got the shots. And I literally, it weakened me to the point where I couldn't transfer myself for our six months. like, And then four months the other time. Like... It, it took that long to recover from the Botox through my system. Um, so I won't get it again. Like I, I'd rather pee on myself that little bit, like that for that 24 hours when I get the change, because that's really the only time I pee on myself, um, which Botox did stop that. It did. Like I didn't pee on my, I, the changes were easier. Like I, I admit, but not being able to transfer myself and not have independence uh, was yeah, not like worth it for me. Yeah, like which one do you choose? Exactly. You so know, that's my, my experience my, with Botox. My, uh, my advice, like, first of all, if you haven't done the Eurodynamics, go get a Eurodynamics, like, done um, somewhere at a hospital. And just see if you're evacuating completely when you catheterize, because if you are draining completely when you're cathing, you shouldn't be leaking in between when you cath, as long as you're not waiting too long. And if you are, then it could be something as simple as bladder spasms. For the first, like, five or ten, uh, five or ten years of my injury, I was on... I took medication called Ditropan, um, which they give to mostly like uh, women like the bladder spasms and stuff, and it causes leaking Ditropan. in between when you go to the bathroom because the bladder's you know is contracting. And with the Ditropan, just a tiny little pill, and it stopped it, and it made it so I didn't leak in between cathing. And it may be a simple solution as that. Um, so uh, first first step in this process, get the aerodynamics done. Try to understand what's going on with your bladder. And if it's, you know, once you do, then the doctor should be able to help guide you in the right way. And it may be Botox. Um, it may be something else. But you just want to make sure you, you know what those options are. For sure. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that's probably about good. Uh, we've gone a little over the hour here. So. We can start to wrap it up, I guess. Um, I think we got to most of the questions. If we did miss a couple, I uh, apologize. I think it was, there was actually a lot coming in for a while there. Um, and if you guys want, at least on Super Pubic Info, I actually just made a page on my website um, just with some basic info that I put up there. And then also, if you guys didn't already know, every week we're here live with live shows. And the third Thursday of every month, we're having women's shows as well, uh, hosted by Brianna Wheeler, and uh, she's uh, uh, another one of our, our cool uh, friends of the show and uh, does a lot for us. So um, just so you guys, just a shout out both shows, check them out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the, the video if you haven't already, comment any questions oh, you have no. below, and I'll get to the questions afterwards if you guys have, I can answer them in the, in, in the comments. As yeah, always, or they could DM, DM. Uh, well, I'm open to them DMing me if they have questions. Yes, reach out to us individually. You know, it's such a like quick hour, and it's such a broad topic. Honestly, we could talk all day about this stuff. So if you guys do have questions that we didn't touch on, you know, just want to speak individually rather than you know in through the chat or whatever, um, all of us we're more than happy to um, talk to you, um, set up a time, to talk, answer questions, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so you guys hesitate. can see that the Instagram's on the screen, and plus they're in the description below. You can click, you can follow Kaylee or Tom if you're not already. So, and me if you Thanks want. Thanks everybody for Thanks joining. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Kaylee, this week Thank for being you. our guest. You're awesome. Yeah, Thanks, we Sean, appreciate for you coming on. Together. You guys yeah. are the best. Thanks everybody.